an emotional and moving farewell to Semekere. Regional leaders pay tribute to the former Prime Minister. And President Donald Trump finally agrees to hand over powers. This is National MTV News with Dennis Orere. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. The country said its final goodbyes to former Prime Minister and member for Mosby Northwest, Semekere Morauta, in an emotional ceremony in Port Mosby today. The church grounds of Sione Kami Memorial Church was packed to capacity as many city residents joined the country's leaders and the family of Semekere to bid farewell. Son Dr. James Morauta could not hold back his tears as he read the scriptures during the state funeral to honor his father. The casket of Sir McCarrer left the funeral home just after 10 a.m. today and was escorted into the Sioni Kami Memorial Church. With a PNG flag placed on the casket, he was received by members of the PNG Defense Force Pipes and Drum Squad who led the procession into the church. Close to 100 colorful woven pandanus mats were laid all the way from the entrance of the church right up to where the casket was laid. This is the traditional way of showing respect by the Gulf people. Prime Minister James Marapeu sat on the front row with all former Prime Ministers, was the first to pay his tribute on behalf of Papua New Guinea as a nation. In our minds, to guide us to make our own contributions to develop PNG further. Semek, farewell now, and we hope to see you on the golden resurrection morning for the eternal life our Jesus promised in the Bible for those who die believing in Lord Jesus Christ, Semek, rest in peace. Semekere's funeral had brought all members of parliament together from both sides of the house. They were all in black and sat on the same benches. Governor General Grand Chief Sebob Dadai and wife were joined by former Prime Ministers Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare and Pius Swinti. Also with them were Bougainville President and Leader of the Opposition. Opposition Leader Belden Nama, who saw the former Prime Minister as a mentor, says Semekere was a true champion of good governance and his return to politics in 2017 was a step he took to fight against corruption in Papua New Guinea. In a military job, I would say, we are forced an elite warrior in a battle against craft, corruption, lack of accountability and transparency in our country. The right of all Senator Marotta said corruption was, a, was systemic and systematic. He said it was a cancer eating away the fabric of our national life. From all the tributes that were said at the funeral, it was the Bible scripture, read by Semekere's son, James Morauta, that captured the hearts of many. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. My rod and my staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Semekere's funeral was well attended by close to 8,000 people. His close friends and former Prime Minister, Sir Rabin Namaliu, read out the eulogy, remembering Semekere as someone who loved his country dearly. It is time to reflect on what we have learned from a full life lived well. The life of a good man and great man. A good man who spent his whole adult life thinking about and working towards what could be made better for his country. A great man who showed Papua New Guineans that governance as solid as humans. Semekere is survived by wife Roselyn and only son James Morauta. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. Executives of the Public Employees Association of PNG have also paid tribute to former Prime Minister and Mosby Northwest MP, late Semikere Morauta. The union leaders expressed words of acknowledgement on behalf of all public servants throughout the country for Semikere's reformist contributions to PNG's public service during his time as a public servant and member of parliament. I take this time uh, to convey uh, for and on behalf of the public uh, service or the public servants, uh, let me convey our sincere condolences uh, to the family of our senior statesman, uh, late Sir Mekere Morata, uh, member for Northwest and former Prime Minister. Uh, on behalf of the public service, we recognize your loyalty, your dedication, your workmanship uh, to the good governance of this country uh, as a member and also as a former Prime Minister. Uh, we recognize you for your uh, reformist. Uh, you have been a, a good a Prime Minister, former Prime Minister that advocated for good governance, uh, corruption, anti-corruption issues. And we uh, take uh, this time to also accord um, condolences to our late uh, champion public servant, our leader, our former Prime Minister, Semek, on uh, his passing, and I believe uh, Friday will be the um, uh, state funeral held. So we allow this time to pay our respects to our former public servant. Chair of the Pacific Island Forum Secretariat, Dame Meg Taylor, has remembered late Semikera Morauta as a leader with great intellect, with a strong knowledge of governance. She says this is being demonstrated in his work in the Pacific Plan Review, in which he emphasized regionalism and the emergence of geopolitical interference, among others. And some of these concerns, she says, are still here today. Dame Mac Taylor says the reform to the Pacific Plan and the inception of the framework of the Pacific regionalism, which she implemented in a time in office, came from the work of Sir Mekere Morauta, following a long consultation process with the governments and people of the Pacific, and will be his legacy in the region. The concerns people had at that time, and, and the years were actually around, uh, I believe, 2013, 2014 is when it was adopted. And those concerns which were expressed to him at that time, it's interesting, still very, are very much on the minds of people now. She described him as a capable bureaucrat who had a strong knowledge of governance. So those qualities helped him um, and to lead a team where he could understand how governments worked, what people wanted of their governments, what was required of the governance arrangements, 
and as a political leader, how to be able to communicate that the issues that people raised with him and governments raised with him. In the PNG context, Dame Mag described him as a man with great intellect and integrity who understood what it meant to be able to look at systems and structures of governance that will serve his people of PNG, and he did this through reforms. Through the financial sector reforms, the work that he did on the banking system, on superannuation, but also going further into the reforms uh, in the defence force. What he thought was and believed was important so that we could make every effort to have a country that we could run and run efficiently. On a personal note, Dame Meg says Sam Meg was a good friend who stood by a family during their trying times. He and Lady Marata and their generosity and kindness to my family when my mother was very ill that could give me another, another five years uh, of our mother's life with our family. And a call for Papua New Guineans during this time of bereavement is to act upon some of what he believed in as a way of remembering this great leader, Ruth Rungola, National MTV News. The president of Fiji today conveyed his condolences to the people of Papua New Guinea and the family of the late Sir Mekere Murauta. President Giochi Konrote paid his respects on behalf of the government and people of Fiji to PNG's High Commissioner, Her Excellency Lucy Bogari in Suva today. When signing the condolence book at the PNG High Commission, President Konrote described Semekere Morauta as a great man of integrity who not only served PNG but the Pacific at large. Semekere Morauta was the seventh Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea from 1999 to 2002 and until his demise, Semekere was a serving member of Parliament of PNG, representing the Moresby Northwest electorate. Fijian President Giorgi Konosi Konrote said today in paying tribute to Semekere at the PNG High Commission in Suva, Fiji, that everyone remembers the astute leadership of Semekere that reset the sails of the Pacific journey, ensuring the importance of political will to strengthen regional cooperation and inclusivity in the Pacific. The Fijian head of state said this has now charted the way forward in securing the Blue Pacific continent as peoples of the Pacific. Uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, so sad. Uh, it's now out in hand over the back. December 2020 to Friday 8th of January 2021 for dignitaries in Fiji, inclusive of the Resident Diplomatic Co. and regional or international organizations in Fiji. PNG High Commissioner to Fiji, Her Excellency Lucy Bogari, described the legacy of Semekere as hallmarked in the wider Pacific region through his leadership in guiding the transitioning of the Pacific plan into what has evolved into a visionary forecast, the framework for Pacific regionalism. But he was a reformist. He was, um, <coughs> he was really the Prime Minister that vocalized the issue of corruption. Uh, yes, and he said that corruption was systemic and systematic. Upon receiving the President of Fiji, High Commissioner Bogari presented a gift on behalf of the government of PNG as a customary token of appreciation to the President, highlighting his presence was a gift to PNG and that the gift symbolizes the solidarity of the relationship between Fiji and Papua New Guinea. The country's seventh prime minister was laid down at his final resting place at the Independence Hill in Port Moresby. With the PNG flag flying at half-mast on the hilltop, he was buried surrounded by family, friends, politicians and his Kukipi people of Tuaripi, Gulf Province. The man from Gulf, regarded as a brilliant reformist, is buried close to another former Prime Minister and Gulf leader, Sir William Skate. Semekere's body was taken to the burial site to awaiting public 
who braved the sun to stand outside the gates to see him being laid down up on the hill. The red, gold, black and white colors were flying at half mast. Semecaris' casket was slowly taken to the burial site and laid there for the final blessings and cultural rituals. Representing the Gulf province and the Tuaripi people, Gulf Governor Chris Iveta and a representative from Tuaripi performed a cultural ritual. Iveta provided a brief explanation of this ritual. When a person dies, his skull and his bones belong to his clan. And therefore, uh, in keeping with tradition, this land this piece of land on which we lay to rest, Semekere, in a customary way, must be turned and declared uh, as part of his land, as part of his clan land, as part of Kukipi. His old sisters sitting in their wheelchairs mourn the death of their brother. After the final blessings and the rituals, Semek's body was laid down for the last time. This was then followed by family and friends paying their final respects. Prime Minister James Marabe and wife Rachel, Lady Roslyn and son James, longtime friend Sir Rabin Amaliu and Sir Charles Lepani were amongst those who paid their final respects to this great leader. Organizing Committee Chairperson Justin Tachenko was grateful for everyone's effort in making Samek's funeral and burial a success. Sam now lies at the foot of the Independence Hill, a place where all Prime Ministers of PNG will be buried. Ruth Rungola, National MTV News. Among the day's other stories, when we come back, a nasty accident in the nation's capital leaves one dead and many injured. Stay with us. Welcome back. Before we go to other news, as Papua New Guineans paid their last respects to a great man, a reformist and trailblazing economist, we searched through our archives and found old footage of Sir Mekere when he was elected Prime Minister. Sir Mek is the first finance secretary, the first economics graduate, and in his term, first term as member of parliament, he shot to the top job of PM at a time when the country was in economic turmoil. As the Bougainville crisis came to an end and with reconciliation work ongoing, the national economic backdrop in the 1990s was dismal, with an important revenue source closed for a decade and political interference rife in key state-owned enterprises. The private sector was under immense pressure. The super funds, what should have been well protected, had been infiltrated by corruption. It was in this period that a vote of no confidence was initiated against the sitting Prime Minister Bill Skate. The moves orchestrated behind closed doors for weeks came out in the open in this parliament sitting in 1999. These pictures we are told are going to other parts of the world, to Australia and would you believe it, to Taiwan as well. They saw at the election of our speaker live yesterday, no doubt they are seeing this these pictures that you are seeing live in Taipei and parts of Taiwan today. Bill Skate, the embattled sitting Prime Minister, the first since independence from the southern region, was beset with enormous political challenges both within his own ranks and externally. And in a public gallery, there is Papua New Guinea's uh, economic, uh, Prime Minister's economic advisor, the one in a white shirt, is Dr. Peruz Himadian Rad. Men, Among his many problems, he had been accused of giving a hefty 7 million kina consultancy contract to his government's Iranian advisor. And only months before, he returned from overseas to a country angered over allegations that some of his ministers had received cash bribes. The events secretly recorded on tape and later published on television. It is a grand coalition. That's what it will probably be, a grand coalition. Inside Parliament, the proceedings caught political analysts by surprise. Party leaders who would not have normally worked together did so. And they chose to vote a first-time MP in a record-setting 90 votes to five. 
the man who was the alternative candidate to Mekere Murauta, East New Britain Regional MP Francis Koiman Rea, also cast a vote in Sir Mek's favour. Honourable members, the result of the vote on the election of the Prime Minister is Mr. Koiman Rea votes five. He was visibly happy when the results went against him. Honourable members. Bill Skate walked over and congratulated his fellow Gulf brother. And this appointment of Makere Morauta as Prime Minister started the long road to recovery that was to see enormous changes in the economic and political landscapes. Makere Morauta attempted to reform other areas of government as well, including land management. It was met with stiff opposition from NGOs and customary landowners. And while his work stood the test of time, the demise of his political party was swift and severe. In the 2002 elections, his party was decimated. Parliament voted Sir Michael Somare as Prime Minister for a third term. Scott Whitey, National MTV News. A passenger of a PMV bus has been confirmed dead after a police-driven hired car ran into a PMV bus at an intersection along the Waigani Boulevard. Among the critically injured is a baby. This is a video taken by a bystander soon after the incident. It shows the passengers of the 25-seater PMV bus seriously injured and in shock, and a baby lying lifeless being picked up by another bystander. According to eyewitnesses, the PMV was hit by a white ten-seater driven by police. The policeman was almost manhandled by the public but was saved by the police mobile squad presence who arrived immediately at the scene. According to the public, especially those who went ahead waiting for the arrival of Semikeris casket to be laid to rest at the Independence Hill, a few meters out from the accident site, the white 10-seater was on high speed and did not slow down when approaching the intersection. The 10-seater hit the back of the PMV bus and sent it flying into the air, spinning three times before landing. The intersection has traffic lights but is currently not working. Since the construction of the road has been open, they have not been uh, operating the uh, traffic lights. So therefore the accidents are taking place so many times. And now the nasty accident that at this morning is be between the uh, uh, PMB operator and plus the uh, uh, police car. Commander of NTD and Central Assistant Commission Anthony Wagami Jr. released a statement soon after the accident confirming that a policeman involved in the incident has been arrested. He said preliminary reports from the OIC traffic revealed that the policeman was under the influence of alcohol, speeding and rammed into the PMV bus after the bus had already crossed the intersection. The 10 seater Land Cruiser is allocated to the Gordon's Police Public Safety Unit. Wagambi said the policeman will be suspended from official duties for criminal and disciplinary charges to be laid immediately. He added that NCD police performance has been picking up in the last 12 months with increased police response to incidents and trying to bridge the gap between community and police. This incident has no doubt created more public dislike. I feel so that police department, government must look at this online. Unexpected life is Meanwhile, head of Port Mosby General Hospital's emergency department, Dr. Sonny Kibob, confirmed that one passenger has died and five others in a very critical condition. These include three children, a nine-year-old, a four-year-old and a nine-month-old baby. Meanwhile, as a word of caution, Wagambi said the traffic lights at the intersection are currently not working. Therefore, it is important drivers must slow down and observe before crossing. Shamin Poriam of National MTV News. 
Education Secretary Dr. Uke Kombra says the 2021 academic year will commence come February the 1st. Dr. Kombra says teachers will resume a week earlier to prepare lessons. The Education Secretary says despite the pandemic, plans have been outlined to schools not to defer or suspend the 2021 school year. The school holidays are winding down slowly as students, teachers and school administrations prepare to kickstart the 2021 academic year. Speaking recently, the Education Secretary says a 2021 school year will not be disrupted. He says classes will resume next month. Uh, schools are going to start on the 1st of February uh, with uh, classes. Uh, this is going to start a week earlier on the 25th of January. The 2020 academic year was a disaster for most learning institutions across the globe and country. With the pandemic seeing more cases recorded in the country, Secretary Komba says the department has prepared for this year's resumption. He says the normal school calendar will be followed. Everything is scheduled to go. Uh, if a disaster strikes, whether it's COVID-19 or any other form of disaster, we'll have to manage that as we go through. But last year's experience has given us uh, more, exp more knowledge and understanding of how to manage uh, disasters. We have actually uh, gone into different modes of teaching and learning uh, from the experience we had last year. So I would say we are more, more prepared than to last year. Meanwhile, a new inclusion to the education curriculum will be financial literacy. This will be incorporated to existing subjects or discipline. A MOE was signed this week in Port Mosby. What is going to be produced uh, will be supporting and enhancing what is on financial literacy or financial inclusion. Yeah. So that's, that's the basis of it. Jack LaPava Jr., National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. More stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. The autonomous region of Bougainville is now under process of upscaling its TVET institutions to international level. Education Minister Theonila Roca Matbob says the Arab government had made an agreement with the Australian government through the Australian Pacific Training Coalition. Martha Lewis with this story. The autonomous region of Bougainville is preparing itself to gain independence from PNG and has demonstrated that through the ballot papers with a 98% voting for independence. The region is now preparing itself towards that goal. Thus, Education Minister for Arab Tionila Mad Bob wants to make sure a department contribute in the independence ready mission process that will contribute directly and technically in terms of building Bougainville for a refer a independence ready mission. In future, the minister would want Divine Red University to set up its campus on Bougainville. The university also has the flexible learning arm where it can also help address this illiteracy level on Bougainville as well as meet the educational needs of its people in preparation for independence. There are reasons why, I mean, I purposely chose Divine Red University. You know, being Bougainville, being 80% Catholic, we need an institution that can be well received by the people. And also, the, we, have, we already have workforce on Bougainville who have been very competent in the areas where they have been working in and have proven themselves to be very competent given the ethics and the preparations that the university has very much contributed in. A third concept the minister is aiming at is outside of the education system. While a ministry is targeting to create an institution that does not look at the educational qualification like certificates and diplomas, but based on skills, talents and a person's aspirations. We kind of like within the ministry's focus, we want to make sure that we designed a very much of a, a sort of a contextualized business education institution in Bougainville that can not just meet the, I mean, 
needs of bougainvilleans but melanie gerard large Masa Louis national mtv news meeting turning overseas U.S. President Donald Trump has finally agreed to a peaceful White House handover, a day after his supporters ransacked the U.S. Capitol. But his enemies say it's too little too late. As dawn broke over the capital, America woke to a new reality. It was terrible and a complete disgrace. I mean, they are just allowed to, the mob is just allowed to walk in. Yesterday's attack on Congress, an assault encouraged by the president. You'll never take back our country with weakness. But today, the message from his administration was distinctly different. Now it is time for America to unite. We are one American people under God. Thank you very much. And then tonight, a change in tone from the man himself. To those who engage in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. The president sharing the message on Twitter after being banned from Facebook indefinitely. Either way, it's too little, too late. Yesterday, in my view, one of the darkest days in the history of our nation. Joe Biden laying blame at the foot of the president. What we witnessed yesterday was not dissent. It was not disorder. It was not protest. It was chaos. They weren't protesters. Don't dare call them protesters. They were a riotous mob, insurrectionists. Domestic terrorists. Donald Trump still has two weeks left in the job, and many are calling for something to be done about a president who for hours sat inside the White House refusing to call for an end to the violence. Democrats demanding Vice President Mike Pence invoke Article 25, declaring Mr Trump unfit to hold office and threatening to impeach the president themselves. The president's abuse of power, his incitement of a mob, against the duly elected representative, representative body of the United States is a manifestly impeachable offense, if there ever was an impeachable offense. But any action taken against Mr Trump could incite further unrest, despite claims like this from his supporters. I didn't, I didn't observe, personally, any violence. Violence? No. Um, I heard about violence after the fact. Loyalists still in Washington today, some claiming they had no part in what occurred at the Capitol. We're patriot, patriotic people. We're not, we didn't want to, to destroy this building. But charges are being laid, arrests made. The Capitol Police Chief has quit, as have senior administration staff. US media speculating the mounting losses finally forced the front up today. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly and seamless transition of power. His is an administration on fire, but having fanned the flames of hate, the president's now trying to extinguish any further action from his most loyal supporters. Trukai Sports is next. Kilawani has the details. Thank you, Dennis. We preview the NCD Governors Cup and update from the Women's National Soccer League. Join me for the details in Trukai Sports. Tukai Sports. Good evening and welcome to Trukai Sports. The NCD Governors Cup competition will conclude this Sunday, 10th of January, with the grand final to be played at the Kony Tigers Oval at Waigani. NCD Governor Powis Pakop will be in attendance to award trophies and prize money to the competition winners. The NCD Governors Cup Grand Final will be contested between QPR Colts and Savaga South Brothers as the tournament finally reaches its conclusion after weeks of competition. Both Grand Finalists navigated their way through tough encounters in their respective semi-finals. SS Brothers 8 defeated Mafex GH Eagles 2, while QPR Colts defeated Tox Mafuka Eels 20 points to 14 in an entertaining match. The losing semi-finalists, Mapex GH Eagles and Tox Mafuka Eels will battle it out for the third and fourth place playoffs, 
before the grand final match on Sunday at the Coney Tigers Oval. This edition of the NCD Governors Cup is the largest to date, with a total of 48 teams from around Port Mosby participating in the annual off-season rugby league event. Huxley Lovai, Chukai Sports. And PNG Football Association and Women's National Soccer League has rescheduled the date of the second WNSL transfer window period. This is in compliance with Article 44 of the WNSL regulation of the competition. The new date for the WNSL transfer window period is set from January 24th to the 28th, 2021. This reschedule is in compliance with Article 44B, which states the second window period opens one week prior to the completion of first leg of the 2020-2021 WNSL round matches in the respective conferences and closes at the commencement of the second round of the competition. PNG Football Association Competition Director Paul Isarua announced the changes after assessing and also receiving concerns from franchise owners about the timing of the WNSL transfer window. Isarua in a statement lays the following reasons for the change. Firstly, the new timing serves as a technical advantage for the teams to work with and assess their current players before making decisions on player movements. Secondly, since the WNSL competition is being revived, players who are registered with affiliated member associations and affiliates who have not been included in the initial team list due to genuine reasons may be allowed chances of inclusion in the final revised team list during the transfer period. PNGFA Secretary General Pius Latenge commended the competition department for the rescheduling as this gives a sense of relief to the club managers. Meanwhile, the WNSL in Northern Conference will resume competitions this weekend. Trukai Sports continues with more stories when we come back. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Newcastle NRL Rugby League players are set to face Pardon, are set to a face-to-face -face showdown with star halfback Mitchell Pierce over a scandal that's said to split the team. Pierce was told to stay away when the squad resumed pre-season training, with the club trying to manage the fallout around his texting of a Knights employee, which led to the cancellation of Pierce's wedding, his captaincy also under review. We have got some good candidates uh, for leadership within that group, but um, you know, that'll be for, for Adam and his, you know, his team, more importantly, to, to work out which way the captaincy will go. Pierce is due to meet with his teammates at the end of the week to try to restore his reputation with the club. The Wellington Phoenix are determined to secure their first win of the A-League season this weekend when they take on the newest team in the league. The Knicks face MacArthur FC on Saturday after falling to defending champions Sydney FC 2-1 in their opener. Midfielder Cam Devlin says the side is targeting three points against the newbies but knows they'll be tough to beat. Look, a good team there on paper, and um, they got a lot of experience, a lot of a lot of good new young players that um, we haven't seen much of. So there's no easy games in the A League. MacArthur FC have had one win and a loss in their first two games of the season. And that story wraps up Trukai Sports. The weather report coming up next. Bye for now. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. To the regional forecast in southern region, Port Moresby, light rain showers and drizzles tonight and tomorrow. Daru, few showers and drizzles tonight and partly cloudy morning. Kerama, light rain drizzles tonight and partly cloudy morning. Alotau, mostly cloudy tonight with morning rain showers and drizzles. Popondetta, rain showers, drizzles tonight, then cloudy morning. To the Momase region, Lei and Medang, rain showers and drizzles tonight, then cloudy morning. 
We work cloudy tonight with chances of morning showers and thunder. Vanimo, rain showers and thunder tonight and tomorrow. To the New Guinea Islands region, Loringal, rain showers and thunder tonight, then cloudy morning. Kavian, cloudy with some rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Kokopo and Rabao, rain showers easing tonight and cloudy morning. Kimbe, occasional rain showers and thunder tonight, then cloudy morning and cloudy with some showers for Buka. And to the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, rain showers with possible thunder tonight, then morning fog. Kuroka and Kundiawa, rain showers and drizzles tonight, then morning fog. Mendi and Wabek, rain showers and drizzles tonight, then morning fog. Forecasts for small crafts for the next 24 hours. Orders of Southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerama to Yul Island to Hood Point to Samurai Island with waters of Samurai Island to East Cape to Cape Vogel through Huon Gulf to Finchafen with waters of Finchafen through VTS Dampier Straits to Siasi Long Islands with waters of Long Island to Kaka Island to Wewek to Aitape to the northern PNG Indonesian border with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, with waters of New Ireland to Bougainville and with waters of eastern West New Britain, seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters, waters of eastern and western Millen Bay Islands, seas 1 to 1.3 meters. Ocean forecasts for PNG areas. Coral seas see slight with southeast to southwest winds of 10 to 15 knots. Solomon seas see slight with north to northeasterly winds of 10 to 15 knots. Bismarck seas see slight with northeast to easterly winds of 10 to 15 knots. And Pacific Ocean sees slight to moderate with easterly winds 10 to 20 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's the news, sports and weather for Friday 8th of January 2021. Pleasant viewing. Be safe. Bye for now.